in this incident, there were two teenage sweethearts who had fallen out. They seemed to have been rejected. I think two of the, um, the girls' friends came out and they were trying to rush over towards the body. We took the two girls who, who was actually with Eliana as well and just took them into our building and um, we managed to just keep them in a nice safe space. On the morning of September 27th, 2023, a horrendous act took place on Wellesley Road in Croydon, South London. Eliane Andam, a 15-year-old student at the Old Palace of John Whitgift School, had just gotten off the bus around 8.30 a.m. She and two friends were on their way to school during the morning rush hour. As Eliane stepped off the number 60 at the Whitgift Center bus stop, A 17-year-old male who has been unnamed in news reports due to his age approached her. Witnesses described a chilling scene where the young lady was wearing a green blazer and appeared to sense danger as if she didn't want the boy to come closer. The attacker brandished a weapon described as black, thin and about a foot long and equipped with a serrated blade. In a cruel act of vile, he lunged at Eliane, wounding her in the neck and chest. Blood flowed like water, as one security guard put it, and members of the public rushed to her aid. Passers-by, including a bus driver, desperately tried to save her life before the arrival of emergency services. Her friends were later seen trying to break through the police barrier to reach her and inquiring if she had passed away, but they were held back. I turned around and I could see that someone was trying to resuscitate her over there. There were loads of people that had just come off of the bus and then I think two of the, um, the girl's friends came out and they were trying to rush over towards the body. So myself and a few of the other people tried to hold her back and just say, look, let them try and help your friend. And she was just screaming, is my friend dead? And saying, this We all friend. hold our children close and our community will take time to grieve. But for today, we are just thinking of this young girl and her family, I'm so sorry. We took the two girls who, who was actually with Eliana as well and just took them into our building and um, we managed to just keep them in a nice safe space for a few hours and um, just sat down with them, counseled them, um, just made them, made, made them feel safe. Um, and unfortunately we had to also tell them the news as well. Despite the noble efforts of both citizens and professionals, Sadly, Eliane succumbed to her injuries at the scene merely 50 minutes after the brutal attack occurred. A sense of disbelief gripped the witnesses as the perpetrator fled the scene on foot. The incident shook the community and her family, friends and school were left devastated by the senseless loss of such a much-loved young lady. How bad is the problem of knife crime in this area? very bad and it seems like nothing's being done about it. Everyone wants to talk but no one wants to do anything. What do you want to see now that would make you feel safer in this area? Bag searches in all schools, um, something to stop people being able to hide their identity. Like I know a lot of people wear masks and stuff so cut that out completely so you can at least know who the person is. About 75 minutes after the incident occurred and approximately a mile away in New Eddington, police apprehended the 17-year-old suspect who was known to Eliane. He remained in police custody after officers were given more time to question him. Reports indicated that he was charged the following morning. A knife believed to be the weapon used in the incident, described as a zombie knife, was later recovered by law enforcement on Cedar Road in Croydon. We carried out urgent inquiries to find the suspect and within 75 minutes of the incident happening, a 17-year-old boy was arrested in New Addington. He remains in custody and will be questioned by detectives. The incident drew attention not only from the local community, but also from British actor Idris Elba, who expressed his heartache and horror at the senseless act. 
Detective Chief Inspector Rebecca Woodsford stated that officers were making good progress in their investigation and were confident that the attack occurred near the bus stop rather than on a bus. Early on, witnesses said the teen and her alleged attacker were not in a relationship. More details emerged and it was revealed that the confrontation followed an argument between the suspect and one of Eliane's friends during the bus ride. Tragically, Eliane intervened when another girl rejected a bouquet of flowers from the assailant, resulting in her passing. Some reports suggested that there had been an argument on the bus between the boy and Eliane's friend. Well, it's just a very ordinary, everyday scene with children on a bus um, going to school. Um, in this instance, there were two teenage sweethearts who had fallen out. Um, the boy tried to offer flowers and a love note by way of apology. He seemed to have been rejected. Um, things then became out of hand, according to the witnesses. He pulled a, a very large 12-inch um, long serrated blade from underneath his school blazer um, and started trying to attack uh, the girl. Um, According to the witnesses, um, there was a friend of the girl who somehow intervened, um, apparently trying to save her. She, that she sustained a, a, a fatal wound to the neck um, as this sort of incident spilled over from the bus onto the pavement. Uh, and then really, it, 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 truly shocking scenes with the bus driver uh, trying to resuscitate the girl being helped by members of the public. In the meantime, this boy appears to have gone on a bus and gone elsewhere, but um, it, it raises serious questions, obviously, because um, firstly, it, this level of violence among people so young, um, it really has, I think, national kind of, should be a national consciousness. Anthony King, chairman of My Ends, a project dedicated to combating youth bio in Croydon, revealed that the arrested boy had been known to local community groups for some time. I mean, wh wh how are the family coping with everything? Absolutely devastated. The screams and the crying that we heard this morning, um, community members devastated, the police were in tears, um, the grassroots organisations that have been doing tireless work, everybody's broken by it. Croydon was known as the knife crime capital of London. Um, 2021, we had five teenage murders in our borough, and now we're in a position where we've gone 22 months without no teenage murder. And uh, the biggest shock is that, one, it was a young girl who's from a really good home, a really good background, who's now lost her life, and her life is now extinct due to this terrible epidemic of knife crime. Eliane's grieving family, supported by specially trained officers, paid a heart-wrenching visit to the scene of the crime during a vigil. Crowds gathered, offering prayers and condolences. Eliane's mother, Nurse Darkus Adam, inconsolable and trying to comprehend the painful tragedy, was joined by her husband Michael in the somber moment. Dozens of relatives, including aunts and cousins, in addition to community members, laid flowers at the scene. A statement was read by a church leader on behalf of the family as they cried and consoled each other, expressing their profound sorrow and heartbreak over the loss. I don't have the solution, but I can pray to bring solace. And so I want to lead a prayer for the family. Yeah. And not just one side of the family, both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Loads of things are going on in their minds at this moment. And we all have a corporate responsibility. Yeah. Eliane Andam was just months away from taking her GCSEs. She was bright and funny, with many friends who adored her, say her family. We, as a family, are struggling to comprehend this painful tragedy that has happened to our beautiful daughter, and beloved sister, Eliane. Our hearts are broken and we are overwhelmed by sorrow and grief. Our faith in the Lord is strengthening us. We would like to express our gratitude to those who have taken the time to send us thoughtful and compassionate messages and prayers. We kindly ask for your consideration to also 
respect our need for privacy as we attempt to come to grips with our deeply devastating loss. Eliane was a beautiful person inside and out who loved Jesus. She was intelligent, thoughtful, kind, and had a bright future ahead of her. It is our request that you keep our cherished daughter, Eliane, and our family in your thoughts and prayers. Eliane's friends at school were equally devastated with Donna Marie Turner, chairwoman of the local Safer Neighborhood Board, describing them as sobbing and so emotional. Absolutely devastating that another young life has been taken. Um, and I think as a woman, equally, the fact that it was a female life that was taken in such a tragic way. I was never worried. I didn't ever think that we had a grip on it. You may have a lull in something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the mastery of that thing. And knife crime is not anything that uh, can be solved necessarily singularly by better engagement, more youth provision, all those things help. But this is actually a societal problem. And until we are taking a societal lens to look at it, to solve it, we will always have lulls and then we will have lapses and then we have, as we've had today, and we had one what, a couple of weeks ago, things start to pick up. In a book of condolences, they reminisced about her infectious laugh, highlighting the depth of her impact on their lives. Eliane School issued a heartfelt statement expressing shock and sorrow over the loss of their much-loved and valued friend and pupil. They pledged support to their students as they grappled with the heart-shattering news. Police officers who had battled courageously in an unsuccessful attempt to save the teen's life were observed laying flowers at the scene, visibly moved by the tragic events they had witnessed. Two days after the incident, the suspect appeared before Croydon Magistrates Court on September 29th, dressed in a grey tracksuit. He was also charged. with possession of a knife. Prosecutor Nicola Grindley told the court Eliane was hanging out with two friends before school when the attack took place. Lawyers acting for the boy said he had not indicated how he would plead to the charges. He was remanded into custody to appear at the Old Bailey on October 3rd, 2023. As investigators continue their work, anyone with information regarding this incident is encouraged to contact the police. You can contact them on 101, quoting reference C as in cat, A as in apple, D as in dog, 1601, forward slash 27, S as in Sam, E as in elephant, P as in Paul. And to remain anonymous, you can contact Crime Stoppers on 0800-555-111 or you can do so online. May the family and friends of Eliane Andam find solace in the happy memories and may her soul rest in perpetual peace. My thoughts and prayers are with our family, friends, and specifically her friends who are there to witness such a heart-shattering incident. Thank you.